The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Good morning, everyone. On this Monday, the 26th of September, this is the early edition. This is 8.07 in the morning. It will be recorded and replayed at uh, 10 o'clock. And I also want to uh, wish uh, all our Jewish friends the um, uh, Happy New Year. And this is what happens quite often, actually, in the marketplace is that uh, the expression is that you sell on Rosh Hashanah and you buy on Yom Kippur. So it would be about 10 days' time. I'm wondering if that's the case in this in this situation. And one of the reasons why I'm doing that, and let me just go through all the different the futures. Uh, what we're looking at here is that the Dow futures, let me go there, the YM right now, down quite sharply. After yesterday's action, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's hard to believe that they're still down right now. It's YM is... Uh, down at 29,470, down 198 points. So um, for subscribers to my opening call over the weekend and my weekend overview, about a 50-minute uh, session uh, overview, I discussed a particular a candle in my, uh, my uh, litany of uh, technical tools, plethora of technical tools. One of them is this pattern where a candle opens with just the tiniest little wick. So it opens, has a fractional high. doesn't even have to have it, but it has a fractional high usually. Sh pulls back sharply and then closes halfway to two-thirds above the low of that candle. Well, we've got that. This is on the downside. When it occurs on the upside, and this is the big thing that I've been talking about all year, is that the S&P, although it's only at a peak, being the Chapman methodology, the monthly chart, had a Chapman Roman candle right at the top, very similar to what happened about a, a month after the top in 2008. Uh, let's see if I can even slide across there. Yep, there it is. Uh, 2007, sorry, October 2007, there's the Chapman Roman candle. That was uh, the month after the October high of 2007 at 15.75, uh, uh, 15.76.09. A little bit of a tumble down to 666.79 in March of 2009. So that's been the heads up. And one of the reasons why um, we've been looking at this market and saying, well, that candle is going to be absolutely imperative, especially since it's September uh, and it is fractionally held above the left side high of June, which is at the 36, 38 level. It was a 28, 36. How many times am I going to have to write that in? I keep forgetting, huh? 30, 36, 36. Uh, 0.87. That was the June low. And we got very close on Friday. The low was 36, uh, what was that? 36, 40. 36.47.47. So I'm watching this because that'll start a leg C to the downside. And as George, uh, who called from Boston uh, on, I think it was on Friday, discussing this uh, monthly chart, very seldom historically has the S&P tumbled to a leg C. It's usually an A or a B. And take, even if it takes time, as it did back in 2016, uh, the May high of 2134.72 went down to 1810 in February of 2016 and uh, used up quite a lot of time, but it didn't go to uh, the sea. Okay, what we're looking at, therefore, this morning is that the follow through weakness on Friday has continued. The S&P, let's go to the continuous contract, this is going to be the ES, hasn't gone to the low of Friday, but my rule of thumb with this Chapman Way red Roman candle, uh, with any of the Roman candles, uh, whether it's at the top or whether it's at, at a potential bounce low, says that if it goes halfway into the wick and stays in a shorter time frame, of course this is now a daily chart, so I'm thinking maybe a 120 minute chart, and if it 
In fact, it is right now at that level of 36.79, down 29. There's a chance that it's going to test and maybe even break the, the left side low. That's the low of Friday. So in, in the futures, that would be at 36.60.25. And then we'll have to see where it closes. And there is a chance, based on the number of techniques that I'm using, that says today or tomorrow is where there's at least the first decent turnaround attempt. When I say decent, I mean that it, the market rallies starts to broaden out after about the second day, and it lasts more than a week. It'll actually last maybe into early next week. This is, it's tough because you've got, okay, let's go through the numbers now. So let me go through them one at a time. The YM, the Dow futures are down 207. This is now at 8, uh, 11 a.m. in the morning, Eastern time. More than halfway into the lower lower wick, that long lower wick from Friday. So it says, yep, you could t test the bottom. The uh I'm going to the continuous contract of the E-mini. The E-mini is down to 36.79.50. And that could, of course, test the low of Friday. The QQQ, let's go to the NQ just for the moment. There's a continuous contract, 11,299 down 77 right now. The low on Friday, and this is in a Chapman Wave inside track propellant zone. Could slip out for a moment, but it can't go more than a moment. So the low on Friday was 11,374.75. You've got to watch out because that could be tested. Uh, the y, the IRTY, that is the uh, the Russell 2000. I'm actually going to just the IWM because it's all notated and ready. I uh, had a Chapman Wave a Roman candle, red one at the bottom. Had a 165 round number low, exactly 165.00. And we're going to see if that's taken out. And so far, it's at 164.95, down 2.36. Let's look at gold. Uh, gold is uh, down 5.4 at, uh, what is it, 15? No, 16.50. <coughs> Excuse me, still getting over that. Scratchy throat. Um, so yes, so gold keeps going down. If you look at the left side low in the uh, cup, in the arch formation in the weekly chart, uh, you're looking at look at this left side right side price time match. It it uh, held on the week of the 22nd of July at uh, 1696, bounced a little bit to the 14 period exponential moving average, the black line, which is has the pink underneath it, and that's a big, big negative. So it's pulled back. It's in leg D underneath the left side. So this is the dreaded H. It's already now one, two, three. This is the third week. This will be the fourth week, actually. No, oh, this is the current week. That's right, the futures we're looking at. So this is the current week, ninth. Uh, yep, this is it. So this is the week of the 30th. So what we're looking at is... You've gone underneath it with uh, two to three uh, sessions after the left side low is taken out. Looking at silver, silver is acting. The chart is a lot better than gold. It's down 19 cents at 18.71. This is Basil Chapman at 8, uh, 14, 8 in the morning. Early edition. I'll be back in a moment. Basil Chapman. of booming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We're talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. 
Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call, call, call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi, folks. Uh, Basil Chapman. This is the early edition of the uh, Tiger Conditions Hour. And I just sent out a corrected uh, version of my uh, Traders Corner. Uh, hopefully, that's going to be posted in a moment because one of the numbers that I put in there was not correct. I just need to double check. Yeah, I think that's the one. That should be good. Okay. I hope so. If I can get a call just to confirm or a text to confirm that it's arrived, I'd appreciate that. Especially now that the market is down, that's what we're looking at. So, okay, let's get back to the story here. So silver is has a much better chart pattern than gold. Not great, but a much better chart pattern, certainly in the daily and the weekly chart. Uh, and we're going to see if this holds quite well. Now, one of the reasons why I mentioned that is because the dollar, now I've got an alternate count. And there are moments where it's really, is, it's prudent to have an alternate count because um, the technicals are suggesting one thing, and the there are certain facets that say, well, you, you just got to be careful. One of the reasons is the dollar is at 113.64, up 44 ticks. I've called this a leg C slash F. Now, what I've done lately is I've, I've started doing this. I don't know if I'll stay doing this or continue, uh, but... In the chat wave notation, I put my preference to say, I believe this is C, but there's a chance that it could be F and we're getting really toppy, but the MACD is strong, the stochastic's 89%. But if you go to the UUP, which is the dollar bull, which is what we've been long for uh, for four years, since uh, the 23s, it's trading at 30.32 right now. This is in a leg D. I like to go to the root, and the root would be the dollar itself. But I want to be ahead of the game. We haven't done anything. I haven't said take anything off. Or any, but I just, in terms of the notation, another reason why is if you look at the euro, EURUSD, the candle that was formed on Friday suggests that the stochastic at 9%, it might be ready for a little bit of a balance. And we're going to be watching that closely in the weekly chart. It is in a leg 
uh, G slash C. There is a trend line that it's just getting into, but I'm doing that. And if you look at the USD JPY, let me just get that back in tra on track. There it is. One of the things I said is that there's a, a, this. There's usually a confirmation when the US dollar Japanese yen go in the same direction. They almost always do. But once in a while, one of them will lead and the other one will start to fail. And in this particular case, with that huge Thursday up down move uh, in the USD JPY with a high of 145.90 and a low of 140. Point, uh, what is that? Uh, 30. That, that's your boundary. And if you look at the chart, there's a difference. It says this rectangle formation in the middle here. It says we could stay in this for a little bit longer. And, that's just, and also you had a doji candle, a long-legged doji candle on Friday. So I'm watching this because a decent close above the 140, the high of 145.90. That was the high of Thursday, the 22nd. Uh, that will suggest that you're breaking out and you've turned the whole this red candle, that whole body, into a huge support level. If it fails to get there, you could get yourself an arch formation. So I'm watching these things very closely. Why do I make a big deal about it? Is because within the context of within the context of the currency, within the context of the dollar being such a powerful force, it's impacting the uh, the uh, multinational U.S. companies. It's just it's very important to be able to monitor this. And if you put it together with gold, which could be right now as we're talking, uh, down four at 1651, uh, looking at the technicals, it could be forming a little bit of a base in which it could have it bounce. And one of the reasons why I'm saying this is because within the context of the overall market, the volatility index, which made a new recovery high at 32.88 today, and remember on Friday I was discussing and I did uh, Tom O'Brien's show and I was discussing as we were talking about that it came back from hitting this trend line, the weekly trend. Look at this week. This is magnificent. Look at that. Channel wave inside track repellent zone. And since it made the high of 38.94 back in January, that was fair, Russia, Ukraine, a anything you wanted you could throw in there. Um, we've been making lower highs. Not necessarily lower lows, but l lower highs. And every time it's got into this repellent zone, it's it's been dragged underneath it. It did that back. Uh, it's done it a few times, but the last time of significance was back in June, the week of no May the fourth, the week of May the fourth, or was that May the sixth? Yeah, May the sixth at thirty six point sixty four, and then the next week it had a pop to the upside went all the way to 35.48 and then got dragged down so this is very important because this week it's gone higher it's gone just above that trend line and that's just saying to me all right this is a very important moment because if for any reason monday or tuesday we start to see a big pullback <clears throat> we start to see a big pullback that's going to be very important because what's going to happen is that uh, the candle will once again be repelled. That is a pullback in the VIX with a rally in the market. This is being, being dragged down. So this to me is a really important moment. There are a whole bunch of things that are cusping. That means they could turn, could uh, deflect lower or just continue higher. This is the moment that we've been waiting for and we'll see exactly what's hap going to happen. Now within that context, I just wanted to check to see if everything was posted because the time is of the essence here. We've got positions that we wanted to take. I made one notational uh, number. Uh, in, in, uh, I thought I checked everything and I made a mistake and I had to send out a correction. So if that correction is out there, that's going to be very important. That'll be good in my, in my newsletter. Um, so within that context, let's just go to, we want to look at the, TLT. So the TLT bonds down to leg E in the daily chart, G slash C in the weekly. It made it made an arch formation, took out the left side low. This is just ugly stuff. Let's have a look at the US, the dollar up. So the bonds themselves, uh, that is at 127 and 31 30 seconds down, almost a point again. I uh, had a horrible session Friday, but it closed uh, a little bit. It, it was a green candle in the end. There is so much going on, but I believe that there's every opportunity here for us to be looking 
at some form of a rally. Now, I discussed this on Friday uh, in the afternoon when I did Tom's show, the Tom O'Brien show. I discussed it when I did my uh, show at the Tiger Technicians Hour at 10. I'm going to be discussing this again, and now it is at 8.25 a.m. in the morning, so it'll be replayed. This will be at 10.25. So this is what we'll be looking for. Not everything is as ideal as I would like it, meaning that we're in the context, oh, look at this strong move up. Oh, wow. I hope I got everything out in time because this is very important. Uh, here we go. Within the context of the market as it stands, the ideal, I had said on Friday, is if we close kind of ugly Friday, and we, we closed not as ugly as I wanted, but it was ugly, and on Monday we start to head down, I'll talk about what we'd be looking for if there was a turnaround and the sustainability and the volatility index and all the aspects that go to some kind of if it's going to go I'll be back to the trap the traffic on the edition 826. I'll be back. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Everyone, we're back. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technicians, our early edition. And uh, okay, this is th th these are the things that I looked at over the weekend. And one of the reasons why I feel that there's a chance that some f some form of a low is being made either today or tomorrow, or, or just early this week. What I mean by that is a low that is a tradable low, uh, a low that says yes. You can get a bounce, but it has to broaden out. There's no way that you can just get, say, a Dow bounce. It needs to include the QQQs. What are the QQQs? QQQs that is index 100 trading right now, 274.44. It needs them to rally, I would say, uh, 
by Wednesday or Thursday, somewhere in the 286 to 288 area. That's a lot. I mean, that's asking a lot. You're looking at the, even the IWM, the Russell 2000 small caps trading at 165, 60 right now. I need to see the gap filled. I want to get into that bar. It needs to look like a V-shaped recovery. Now, the rule of thumb is that, for, for my rule of thumb, for a V-shaped pattern to unfold, you need very quickly for the VIX index to be pulling back. You need follow-through rallies. I would prefer that this is later in the day. I prefer that this, this is a rally attempt right now. Kind of fails. It looks good. And then all of a sudden, kind of 11 o'clock, maybe 11.30, there's a, another slide to the downside. And that it really only gets going later in the day. And that's where you see about 150 point, uh, 120 or 150 point Dow rally going from about, I would say, 220 in the afternoon. I prefer actually 240 later in the day, but 220 is fine. And just running strongly. And all of a sudden, the shorts that are gloating because the market had been pulling back today, which they thought, uh, you know, after the weekend should be an ugly day suddenly turns around and in fact we start to close getting closer towards the four o'clock close today we start to close uh, all the all the all the gap downs that we had seen uh, and the market is rallying but within that context i want to see the iai maybe it can be a, a day or so delayed that's fine but this is the iShares broker dealer and security etf which made a lower low on Friday, just gapped down, a very ugly candle. It turns out to be a Chapman Roman candle as well. But I, that high that was made, the open and close, no, sorry, the open and high of the day, which is at, so the open on Friday was at 89.10, and the high was 89.10. There wasn't even a wick. That's how ugly it was. I want to see by Tuesday, maybe even Wednesday. It could take a little bit of time, but it has to start moving up. I don't want to see it close below yes, uh, Friday's low in the IAI, which is at 86.62. Uh -uh. What I want to see is that there's a turnaround and you start to fill that gap. This will be lagging because this is now a stock. It's different to uh, uh, made up of the brokerage stocks and they kind of lag. When they start to pick up steam, they pick up steam very quickly. Uh, but in the meantime, I want to see them participating. I want to see for the first time that bonds actually, this is leg E, make a peak E, don't make a lower low today, although it's at oh, 104.51. So uh, let me just get to this as an E, whoops, lowercase E on the way down. Yeah. The low was 104.50 want to pour, oh, we're, we're almost there we probably have intra intra inter morning taking it out uh, you'll see that in the bonds themselves so that's the tlt let's go to the bonds no bonds haven't so 127.24 right now the low on friday was 126 and 29 30 seconds so there are a lot of things going on right now and most importantly what i am looking for is the persistence of the selling needs to be ameliorated by some kind of upside thrust. I would prefer if it's later in the day, actually at this particular point, you could start a move up that is very skeptical because it keeps moving up, but then it makes a pullback. But overall, when you're looking at say the 100, let's look at the 10 minute chart, looking at the 10 minute E-mini chart, what you want to see, let's just go to this over here. There it is. Um, all the uh, these there are different fib numbers in there, but mostly it's gone sideways. And what you want is that the low that was made, and I think that this was a pretty important low, the low that was made at about uh, 3 this morning, at Eastern Time, at 3660.25, that doesn't get taken out. But the market really struggles. And then over a period of time, eventually the 10-minute chart, 3713, the 200 period moving average gets taken out. Making you so you're raising the base. That's the other scenario, and then slowly but surely making higher highs and preferably higher lows. 
and the market closes the day, surprising everyone, or most people, with a, a pretty nice gain, or maybe a 0% change, but you, then you have to have the futures overnight um, really moving up, so that by tomorrow morning, you kind of gap up, to, gap up and start a really strong rally. Normally, I just wouldn't waste time on, on talking about some kind of a potential low. But the reason why it's so important at this particular stage in the market is that we've actually spent almost nine months declining. Look, every one of these, look at the Dow. We've used up a tremendous amount of time. Like here's the chart. This, this is the 36,952 high of the week of the January the 5th. And basically, when you think of all the negative aspects that are out there, look, war, nuclear has been discussed. Crude oil skyrocketed to 120. Of course, it's much, much lower right now. I haven't even looked at crude oil. Crude oil right now is down uh, 60 cents at 78.14. So within the context, this is telling us more about the economic, the world economic situation uh, with the crude oil pulling back, saying there's a slowdown. Now, interestingly enough, uh, I, I, uh, someone I was in contact with uh, last night um, was talking about markets. Uh, it's not his field at all, but he was uh, he's going under uh, undergoing some treatment and uh, discussing different things. And then he just got around to talking about his business, which is in... Uh, Basically, those were warehouses, you know, for storage. Uh, he, that's one of the things that he does. He does a lot of other things as well, but buildings. Built, he's built a lot of big, big buildings. And he said, this is the craziest thing I've ever seen over the last few years. It is frightening how much money has been made in real estate. He said, it just can't keep going. He said, I, 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 I can't believe it. Uh, I can't believe what's going on. And he said, this, this is unsustainable. And this is someone who's been in, the, in real estate just forever, the family has. So I'm looking at this and I'm saying, well, I'm hearing this from many sources, that the gains that were made over the last year or two in some places in the country are spectacular. So I'm thinking rotation. I'm thinking, how do we get out of this? And the only way I could see it right now is to think, well, at some point, the market is going to turn around and uh, the market might be a little bit more independent than real estate as real estate has, has made some kind of a top doesn't have to crash, but could. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. 
The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hi everyone, Basil Chapman here. This is Tiger Tech. This is our early edition. It's a replay at 10 o'clock. So th these are the things to look for when the market opens. Uh, I've got 40, what, 45 minutes or so. Um, but what I should do, actually what I should have done, I should have sent this out. Oh man, I made a mistake. I should have done that. Let me just see if I can do that now. Uh, Dow, let me just, uh, if you don't mind, because I'm doing an early edition and I also made an error. Nah, that's not the one. No. So I'm uh, looking at this. Yeah, I don't want to waste time on the, uh, just doing this. Uh, I, I'll have to do it in a little while uh, just to say what it is. There it is. Okay. So I'm just going to do this, send it out. Oh, nothing. Nothing's moving uh, quickly here. Isn't that interesting? So, okay. Um, within the, oh, there it is. Thank goodness. Okay, let me just make that. And then I need to just type in something here. Uh, corrected. Uh, oh, I'm having trouble. Isn't it? I never have trouble on this particular thing. And right now I'm having trouble. Uh, okay, that's all right. I'm just typing in something just for my subscribers. Number number one has by the mm -hmm, under. Oh, now I better get the figures right. Okay, so that's going to be under. I'm wasting time. I know. I'm sorry. I apologize to ninety five thirty five. Okay. That's what I needed to see. Okay. So, uh, Tommy, I'm just sending this out right now. I'll send it to you. There we go. Bye. Nah, everything's taking too long. Unbelievable. When you're in a rush, you cannot be in a rush because... There. Nine five oh. thirty five. Okay, good. I've got it. Now I'm sending it off. Okay, send it off. Save. I don't know, maybe it's too late, but I'm trying my best. Correct. Okay. Save. And now I'm going to send it. Oh, this is just a nuisance. God, how did I make such a silly mistake? Uh, okay, so there. I don't know if it's been sent yet, but I'm going to do my best. 
So what we're looking at here, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So here we go, sending it off, just uh, you're having to listen to me uh, prattling away here, I'm sorry about that. Correct entry on. Mm -hmm. And post, there it goes. Send. All right. Whew. I'm sorry. It took that amount of time, but I just needed to do that because it was really important for subscribers to my opening call. I had mistyped a number, and I needed to correct that. So, okay, here we go. So the, a couple of things that are very important. If you look at the IYT, that's the uh, – IYT is the iShares Dow Jones Transportation Average uh, Index, and um, just sent – the I A buy. Um, so the IYT is trading. If you look at the monthly chart, that has gone about a fifty percent correction from the one hundred sixteen point sixty one high to the two eighty. Uh, sorry, low of March of twenty twenty to the high of two eighty, and then what happens is it pulls back to two o one, and um, that. When, you, when you're looking at the transportation index, it's really important. I love, you know, there's, there's Dow theory about the transportation index, and it worked really well for years, for decades and decades. In a sense, it's now very appropriate, but in a very different way, because you've got such a mix of transportation. You've got Amazon, which has created a whole field in, its, in transportation. Uh, UPS has had a change, and all these things going on, so that you don't have, say, truckers that are very important but as important as the rails or the rails as important as the airlines we've had the airlines having a tremendously difficult time this year yet truckers they keep going now you've got the price of of, of diesel very very high so it's really important to look at it as a picture and the picture says that there's been a tremendous decline in fact what uh, uh, this person last night said, and I thought it was so appropriate because it's what I've been talking about for, for, for months and months and months. He said, oh, man, he, he said, we're, we're in a recession. And I'm saying to myself, I've been talking about this for ages. I've been saying if you look at the different sectors, look at the transportation index from about, say, uh, January of this year, if you look at it, they transport, transports have been in a recession. Look at the SMHs. I don't know why they're waiting for some official result. And usually when they talk about an official result, that's pretty much the end of the recession. I don't know if that's going to work this time. But look at the semiconductors from the double top in January at 318. We're down here at 189. In fact, 191 as we speak, uh, a pre-market, uh, testing the 189.94 low of June. That's a recession. I mean, how else would you call it? Month after, uh, quarter after quarter of, of weaker earnings, that's what it looks like, right? You can just go through even the IYR. And this is very unusual. The IYR, which is the iShares Dow Jones US REITs index. Not quite as bad a monthly chart, but not a great looking monthly chart. Making this dreaded H pattern in the weekly, made a lower low, a leg E. And look at this. It's, that speaks to recession. So I don't know what they're waiting for, an official name or a result or whatever it is. But in the meantime, back at the ranch, what we're really looking, really looking at is titles. Is the title of this particular phase in the economic spectrum a recession? It doesn't really matter because all, all of these quarters in the different sectors have been weak and every, every con, uh, consecutive quarter has been weak. So now let's get back to the VIX index. The VIX index, when you consider when you consider each one of these peaks, had pretty much the same thing: interest rates, uh, it was uh, Fed, it was Russia, Ukraine, it, it was oil at some point. It was basically now we're looking at interest rates. So within that context, this is really uh, really quite important because if you look at the um, the volatility index. It's at a high 
and it's been working its way slowly to fix this high, but it hasn't broken above. The 34 high was the 35.05 high of June. That's when the market low was made. So if you're going to be working very close to I suspect yeah, so some kind of opportunity. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi everyone, Basil Chapman here. This is the early edition of the Tiger Technicians Hour and uh, before nine. Now let's just let's just look at this uh, as we're looking at it right now. The Dow is now only down. The futures are down 62. They were way way lower before, <clears throat> and there's been a correct uh, correction made for it. A number one in my traders' corner. Uh, I think you can assume what it was, but I don't want assumptions just made. And uh, the, the number is there. Actually, it was perfect before. But because it's coming out a little later, maybe we might miss it. I'd like to get it at the price that we put in there. We'll see what happens. Okay. So let's, the ideal situation is that everything's a little speeded up here. If a little later on in the session, we got that big pullback, minus 200 and something in the Dow, just to have everyone throw up their hands and say, I'm done. This is just ridiculous. I can't stay in here. And then you start to move up later in the day. That's one scenario. That's the best scenario. The second scenario is that... The selling has just been intense for the whole week. So at this particular point, you could start your rally and keep rallying. Uh, but most importantly, what you want to see is late in the day, at about between 3 and 4 o'clock, that the Dow is actually holding a plus 150 or so. And the general market, it can't just be selected, it doesn't just be the Dow, it must be the, the QQQs, the Index 100 training vehicle. Yeah, I would prefer also to see the IWM, the Russell 2000. And then we can see some kind of, uh, more than a bounce, a bit of a rally that takes us in for the whole week. A whole week. <laughs> can you imagine that? 
of mostly running that they, by the end of the week on Friday at Friday afternoon, uh, end of the month, I want to see a decent close on the on uh, the monthly charts. That's going to be that, from the lows that were made. That is, so that's the kind of the scenario I'm looking at. If we go down minus 500 points at any point today at this particular stage and don't rally at all by uh, two, uh, 250, maybe 320 this afternoon, Eastern time, that'll be very negative. So those are the scenarios I'm looking at. And within that context, uh, all I can say is that um, we've got a great program. Uh, uh, Tommy Jr. comes up uh, right now with the uh, market kickoff. That should be fabulous. How he puts together the fundamentals with the technicals. And then, of course, you've got my show, which will be right now, at 10 o'clock. And once again, uh, to our uh, Jewish listeners, Happy New Year. Great programming here at TFN. I'll be back tomorrow. Have a wonderful day. You might think.